All right, how's everybody doing? Awesome. The session right after lunch when everybody's going to fall asleep, right? But you got some nice comfy chairs, and hopefully you'll get a little something out of today. So my name's Antonio Sanchez. I'm with Alert Logic. Um, brought my, uh, my friend Max Gropner here from Run Buggy. This session is called Responding to Cloud Workload, Security Issues, uh, Processes, and Best Practices. A um, little bit about Alert Logic. If you're not familiar with us, we are a managed detection and response company. We're based out of Houston, Texas. Any other Texas people in here? Anyone? One? All right. I, yes. All right. I'm glad to be out of the 105 degree weather, even if it's just for a couple days. So this is awesome out here. Uh, but uh, anyway, want to introduce? Let Max introduce himself. So Max, introduce yourself to the audience. Hello, everyone. I'm Max Gruppner. I'm the head of security at Rumbuggy, and we use Alert Logic in our tool set. Wonderful. Thank you. And you're going to be hearing a lot from Max as we as we go through today. So you know, obviously, this is a lightning talk, so it's a fairly fairly quick session. Um, automating response is basically an, uh, what used to be an optional thing or nice to have is very much becoming a necessary function. Uh, so, and we'll be going over a phase and strategic approach to response maturity. Hopefully, by the end of this session, you'll be able to help. You'll be able to take something away that will allow you to either evolve your existing security strategy, evolve your response strategy, or for those of you that may be new and now have full responsibility of security for your organization, it'll help you define that which sometimes we, we get some of those some of those as well. So, but quick question, how many of you, with your organization that you represent, how many of you feel like you're understaffed or your staff runs really lean? Show of hands. Okay, so quite a few people, yeah, everybody. Two hands, yeah, a couple people had two hands go up. Terrific. How many people are fully staffed? You feel like your organization, your security organization is fully staffed? No hands. I expected at least one. <laughs> but one? No. Okay, somebody's messing with me in the background. Um, and so I already know the answer to the question, but I ask anyway. Anybody overly staffed, that never gets it, right? Usually at least one or two people raise their hand and say they're fully staffed, but nobody ever raised their hand and say they're overly staffed. And I see people smiling and laughing because, you know, you all, all know the deal here, right? Um, well, you know, I, I get asked sometimes, like, hey, what do we do to be able to protect against ransomware? And the answer to that is basically the same thing that you protect against everything, which is this, what you see on the board. You have to reduce the, your risk of something happening, what we call the pre-breach environment, and you have to have a plan in place in the event something does happen because there's no such thing as 100% security anymore. You can't, you can't even unplug your, your data center anymore because everything is in cyberspace. But Max, you've been doing this a long time. Run buggy, even before run buggy, I mean, when you when somebody asks you how do you respond when, when we look at this environment and protecting your your, your environment? Yeah, I, I think historically, right, there was a lot of time spent on the pre-breach, like prevent, don't let anything happen. But that's not reality. If you're working in security, you know things are going to happen. So event and what happens after the event, I think it's been a little bit of a shift where you really want to understand what happened, you know, get your forensics going quickly and recover gracefully, as they say. So um, at least in my experience, obviously. Pre what pre event super important, but also what happens after. Um, yeah, yeah, and and so you have a lot of security controls to be able to hopefully stop the bad actors from getting in. But we all know nowadays, or you've heard that misconfigurations are the biggest uh, uh, threat vectors when it comes to working in in the cloud. So it's just as important to ensure that you have an eye on those threat vectors and can be able to reduce that. And not only just the post breach environment of limiting the blast radius, limiting the impact of a, of a potential issue, but also what you can learn from that and how you can be able to apply that to be able to, to reduce the chances of it happening again. Because nobody wants to find out what their response plan is when something is actually happening. See, I see there's always some people that are smiling. They have a horror story like, hey, something's happened. What do we do first? Well, we call Bob. Bob left the company two years ago. Oh, okay. Well, who took over his role? Well, his, Bob, his job got split up into two, and they reorged one went over here and one went over there. So hopefully you guys are doing some tabletop exercises or – or at least at least once a year, looking over your your, your response plan and your response strategy. Um, but a, a minute ago, why I asked about security teams remaining lean? Um, security teams are lean across pretty much every type of organization, whether you're a startup, obviously startup, SMB, um, mid-sized organization, enterprise. Everybody is pretty much running lean. I mean, you, you've been at run buggy and places before. Have yep. you ever been at a place that? Wasn't running lean or wasn't fully staffed? Not, no, not really. No? Uh, it's always been uh, a challenge. Uh, 
well, A, to find people, but then budget-wise, at Rumbuggy, we started with one security person that was me and the one IT. We've grown since then, but uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's always been do more with less. And <laughs> that's do pretty more, much with, the do more with what you have and then do more with less. Exactly. And then do even more with even less. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then some of the shortages, which I'm not going to go through all of these, but you know, call out a few of them, cloud computing security. That's always the biggest uh, barrier to be able to embrace a security-first strategy. Uh, people that know how to be able to do the uh, investigation and analysis. Again, this is research that was done from, uh, from, from 451, uh, as well as from this one actually is ESG research, which just came out a few months ago. Um, finding the people is hard. Um, and not only finding them is hard, keeping them is hard as well. Um, and when you don't keep them, that increases workload staff. I mean, you were a security team of one at Run Buggy. I mean, I'm sure that was tough on you, right? Yeah, we basically had to do it all in the beginning, but you know, because of part partner cycle like logic, um, you kind of try to ramp up quickly, scale, scale with the business, uh, and kind of, you know, in the beginning, it's a little bit of frantic. If you're working those startup, I'm sure you're familiar with it. Uh, try to do everything all at once, but. Yeah, and then you kind of slowly grow and, and get your arms around everything. How many of you are at a startup? Less than five years old. Anyone? Less than ten, one? Okay, less than 10 years? More than, oh, so everybody's more than 10 years or everybody's still waking up from the after lunch, uh, co uh, after lunch coma, which is cool. Um, but, you know, the idea is w when you're looking at automation, being able to methodically approach automation in terms of how to be able to adopt it, how to be confident about it, because as Max said, you either have to do more with less, or more with existing, or more with less. And so one of the takeaways here is understanding that you're gonna have manual, things that are gonna be manual, you're gonna have things that you'll be able to automate, and then you're gonna have things that you're probably gonna require a little bit of human intuition as far as what you do before you execute some sort of an action, and a little bit about that journey. Uh, this, this, uh, this chart right here is from uh, 451 Research, um, we've got it available on our website, but it talks about the 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 maturity response maturity where um, on the top uh, on the top uh, horizontal axis it's your response time from slower to faster on the bottom it's efficiency scalability and it talks about the different phases of maturity and how to be able to adopt maturity uh, uh, how to adopt automation and mature. Uh, through that process such that you can um, uh, embrace it and become more efficient, whether you're a team of one, a team of a few, or even a team of many, because the alerts keep coming in, the tickets continue to come in, there's no shortages of those, but you have to be able to close things out uh, quicker uh, quicker and faster. So with manual, oh, I went a little too far, but that's okay. Uh, but with manual automation, everything is manual. Obviously, you're going to have to look at all the tickets as they come in, make some decisions about what you want to go do and what actions you want to take on your security control. And then when you get into human guided, this is where you start a adding a little bit of the human intuition, the human touch point to be able to decide, do I want to be able to take this set of action or a certain set of actions here? So a little bit about you know, when you guys started. So Run Buggy, you guys were one of our early adopters. You're part of our beta program of our uh, automated response uh, capabilities within our within our solution. Talk a little bit about kind of how you went down this path around deciding what you may want to start uh, uh, automating. Yeah, um, so we talked about, right, we have small team, have to do a lot. Um, automation, it's not a new concept. And um, we really wanted the the daily mundane tasks to kind of automate. So we have you know, a new account creation on Azure or Okta. Somebody wants to verify it's a valid user. There's a ticket. We linked our Zendesk with alert logic and have some automation where it says, hey, there is a ticket. It's an approved user. So let's, let's move on. Uh, our analyst doesn't have to spend a lot of time looking through tickets. It does that pre-grooming, if you will. Um, we're also looking into automation for like changes with uh, AWS security groups. Uh, uh, access I mentioned. So there's things that we're just trying to help with the small team that we have, bring true automation to the team so that they can focus on the more value-based value, um, value -based, um, actions that we, that we need. Yeah, so the, the patterns th that you're seeing here is those repetitive patterns, those repetitive tasks. Uh, typically, they're, pro they're gonna start with, or at least what we've seen is they start with tell somebody, notify somebody that this is happening. Um, so that way they can look at it and make some decisions. And once they have a pretty confident that say whatever it is that they do, they're going to be able to go ahead and apply 
whatever action it was going to be, it's not going to cause some kind of unintended consequence. So you go from notifying somebody to notify, then ask them if they want to go ahead and take action. That's where kind of the human guide comes in. And one of the things that we've done Alert Logic that we're super excited about is we've actually tried to make this very simple. So when Max started, Pika, or when Max started with our beta program, we actually had a set of workflows, so embedded SOAR capabilities where you can pretty much build workflows for people that are very comfortable uh, with working with playbooks. Um, but for a lot of people that maybe aren't as mature from a security perspective, we wanted to make it super simple. So we created a set of, of simple actions that they can be able to take with the workflows already embedded and the ability to be able to approve instantly on, a, on an app. So, and these simple responses include things such as uh, shun an IP address, uh, disable a, a compromised credential, or even uh, isolate a system. And it's literally about eight clicks, and you have it, and you have it all done. So some of the things that we're able to do uh, is we can update a policy on an AWS WAF. Um, we can be able to disable a credential using AWS IAM. We can also do that in some of the other cloud products, as well as some of the on-prem products and other firewalls as well. And we're constantly rolling out new uh, new supported items. Uh, that, that make this available because we want to be able to make this easy to adopt so people can be able to adopt at their own pace. Um, and you guys, were you guys using the app or did you guys start using the app recently? Yeah, we, 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 okay. we had conversations. We wanted to use it for like almost like an exception process. Uh, if something changes in an AWS security group, it's usually not allowed, but maybe it needs to be changed. So it goes to our VP of engineering. He has the app. He can improve it right there. And we move on. So that's kind of how we were thinking about it. Okay, terrific, terrific. Um, and then we get into the fully automated response. And when I say fully automated, it doesn't mean that you fully automate everything. It's you have a mix of of things that can go ahead and just be able to execute the action or execute the set of workflows that you want done and then notify somebody that this in fact happened, whether it's your email, whether it's a push notification, whether it's through you know, something like whatever your collaboration system is, like Slack or Service Worker or ServiceNow or something like that. So you can be able to do that. Another set of actions for another set of assets. Perhaps you want to go ahead and have that human intuition with just enough context to be able to say, okay, I want to review this before any of the uh, any of these workflows actually happen. That's kind of that middle group. And then the bottom is the you know the the the, the mission critical stuff that you never want to have anything automated, anything touch for any reason. Think of the e-commerce type of systems. Um, for a lot of people, that could also be their collaboration systems like Exchange or any of their databases where you just want to know when, when something was tripped, when a certain condition is met, but then you want to go ahead and take uh, manual intervention or manual action. So like, for example, let's talk about, you know, a little bit about run buggy now. So you guys have an, are, are yourself serving up an app for your customers. Yep. That app probably nobody should ever touch. Like anything should be you know, reviewed at, before taking any sort of action. So that would be an example of a mission critical item that you would never want anybody to uh, to automate. Would that be accurate in saying? Uh, yeah, that, that would be accurate. Um, I think another example, like especially for us, um, we just assumed that you know we're more mostly North America. So like we we looked into automating blocking certain IPs. Turns out transporters uh, use dispatch in Eastern Europe. So that automation, like to your point. We actually don't want to fully automate because it could disrupt our business. Um, so it's definitely, you know, something that we kind of need to fine tune what yeah. to block, what not to block, because obviously we don't want to. But with something like that, you could at least get a notification that says, "Hey, we're getting this IP address from right. this foreign source." Again, a little bit of human intuition, yeah. human touch point with enough content, like, "Oh yeah, this one's okay. We're going to go ahead and approve and just let this one." Uh, that's exactly it. So yeah. through Alert Logic, we get alerts. It's going to say multiple country logins for these transporters, and now we're thinking about automating that to an email to the customer. You probably get this already, like Netflix or whatever. Like, is this you? You just logged in this device. That's how we're thinking about it, and we're trying to leverage Alert Logic for that. Okay. So, Runbuggy, you can tell the audience a little bit more about Runbuggy, what you guys do, um, oh. why you work on AWS and Alert Logic, and kind of some of the benefits you guys have seen with that combination. Yeah. Yeah, we're a technology platform that connects car shippers with car transporters. Uh, basically, anybody who needs to ship a car, uh, we are also rolling out a C2C or B2C um, platform, which is called Rambagi One. So if you need to ship a car, you can do that. Um, 
we're working with very large brands that you, I can't name, but you've probably seen Super Bowl commercials. So uh, if you buy a car online, we have a lot to do with moving that car. Um, and we were born in the cloud. We don't uh, have a physical office presence. Uh, we're 100% remote. We're 200 people at this point. And engineering, the product made the decision to go with mostly AWS, so that's where our production is. And then security, I was onboarded to secure all, all of the workloads, and um, Alert Logic was a really good fit. Um, and like I said, continues to be a part of our tool set as we grow. I, I think one of the most interesting things was when Max came on board, and by the way, RunBuggy is, on, is an AWS case study, and RunBuggy is also a case study on the Alert Logic website, so check them both out. You can kind of get both perspectives. But I think one of the most fascinating things um, in, in talking to Max is he said when they came on board, they say, you are our security team. But oh, by the way, we have all of these aggressive growth plans, so you need to be able to keep up. So if you saw, heard in the keynote, CJ earlier talked about security should be, uh, nobody wants to be the department of no insecurity. You need to be the yes and or yes but. Uh, so, you know, it's a team of one that was able to figure out a way to, because you weren't going to be able to manage all the tools by yourself, right? There was no way. No. And no. you can't hire people fast enough because there's no. already a shortage of them as it is, right? No. Like within my first two weeks, I already had this customer I can name, uh, conversations with Toyota, who, who we work with, um, and that's a national, I mean, multinational organization. They have tough questions for you. So yeah. I had to scale. We had to scale really quickly with, uh, within the security group. Yeah, you're, you're basically coming into a 100-year-old industry where those those organizations yeah. are used to doing things a certain way. Fax, and you, fax machines yeah. still exist. Yeah. The, 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 the triplicate on the on the on the on the printers. I don't even know the dot matrix. Is that what they call them? The dot matrix. Yeah. All of that stuff. You're disrupting an entire industry. Yep. Yeah. There's going to be some scrutiny to make sure that before they bring you on as a partner, that you're able to prove to them that you have a certain level of security hygiene. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. SOC, SOC two compliance, PCL, all that stuff that yep. you're familiar with. So it's help you, you know. We helped you with that, and then that allowed you to be able to grow your... How, how big is your security team right now? Uh, we're now uh, up to eight people. You're up to eight people. Yeah, okay. we started with two, and now we're up to so, eight. So, and that's in how, what what time frame? A uh, year and a half. About a year and a half? Okay, awesome. Um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, one of the biggest things in our interview that we had with you is um, one of the coolest things we could say is that we prevented you from having to double the size of your security team, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're still a startup. We just made it through Series A, and so Congratulations, budget, by the way. Thank you. Uh, budget is still, you know, obviously uh, watching the budget. So, yes, absolutely. The scaling and the partnership uh, was absolutely wonderful. Terrific. Terrific. Uh, do you have a question? No? No questions? All right, cool. Well, uh, this is my last slide, so thank you all for taking a few minutes to, to join us here today. We hope you found something today that was helpful for you. Uh, come visit us at the Alert Logic booth. We have some cool raffle prices and cool giveaways, and we're doing some presentations over there as well for some other uh, cool prizes. And with that, that's our time. Uh, thank you for joining us today.